Well, what a fun LSU football season it has been, and a big reason for that is Noah Kane, a Baton Rouge native who made his way back home. Yes, Thanks sir. so much for joining us today. Man, thanks for having me, man. Thanks yeah. And me. So you are you were born and raised here, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had moved away from um, Baton Rouge with my mom to Texas in 2006, um, like pretty much right after Katrina. But my dad always stayed back in Baton Rouge, so I was always back and forth. Um, it was always pretty much home to me, honestly. Yeah, so you played at IMG Academy, and then you spent three years at, at Penn State. You joked this past week that as cold and miserable as it was in Tiger Stadium, that was like a, a, a spring day in, yeah. uh, in, at Penn State, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, it really was, though. It really was. Um, the latest and greatest, LSU, number five in the college football playoff ranking. Uh, you guys have done such a great job all year of tackling what's in front of you. But how does that work into the discussion if it does it all right now at this part of the season? Yeah, pretty much right now it's just like really, you know, exiting out the outside noise and just locking in on the preparation and the process that we've been locked in on since fall camp. I just think the biggest thing Coach Kelly preaches to us is just um, mental toughness, you know, just being able to handle the good and the bad that comes with it. And I think, you know, the whole team has done a great job with just handling adversity and success. So I think, you know, even after that Tennessee loss we had, it's about as close as a team and just made us want to work harder. Yeah, I want to compliment you guys real quick on the UAB game because there there was a lot of reasons why you could have gone out there and won that game 20 to 10 or, yeah. or something. It was cold. There weren't a whole lot of fans there. The name UAB isn't as exciting as Alabama, obviously. But it just seems like it, it, it was a day at the office. It was work. You yeah, guys so. went out and just – Played one of your best games of the year, really. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I think, um, like I said, the whole day is Saturday. It was a long day. We didn't play at 8 o'clock. So we had, a, we had a long, long, long time to rest. And it's easy to get slouchy, especially at a night game. It's raining. Um, stadium isn't sold out. We had a lot of excuses for us to be like, well, the energy isn't there. But Coach Kelly, you know, is always saying, man, you create your own energy. And that just was the biggest thing we were trying to do. We were trying to make sure as long as we're handling our job, it doesn't matter who in the stands. It could be nobody, but we just got to yeah. you know, come to work and be able to play. And it's all about uh, maximizing your opportunities, right? And you stepped in there, had almost 80 yards rushing, got in the end zone three times, and you lead LSU in uh, rushing touchdowns uh, this year. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, nah, it's just um, just being, being ready when your number's called. You never know. You can get your opportunity to get in the rhythm. You never know when uh, the coach is going to need to depend on you, you know, make plays and uh, you know, I was just appreciative of the opportunity and, you know, try to make most of it. And that's all you can do at this level. It's like we got a great, talented room full of guys who, are, who all contributed this season. But uh, just being ready when your numbers call was just my mindset, you know, every game this year. So I'm just glad I was able to contribute on Saturday. And it had to feel good for the offense to, to get back on track. Credit Arkansas when you guys went up there. I mean, we, we saw what Arkansas did to Ole Miss this past weekend. Yes, sir. Uh, you got the victory in Fayetteville 13-10. to but uh, I'm sure it was nice to put some more numbers, uh, you know, get some more passing yards, uh, rushing yards, and more points on the board this week. Yes, sir, most definitely. Jaden has done a great job, you know, making this offense real versatile and dynamic. You know, he's a great leader for us. And um, just our old line, they've been playing great these past few weeks, man. He's just opening up holes for, the, for us backs and, you know, just being able to let Jaden do his thing back there. So I think as a team collectively, we've all been able to just mail and, I mean, just yeah. just and mail, I mean, my fault mess better you know for these past few games so it's been it's been great yeah well and it's a team game and everyone's important but mm -hmm. if you gave me a vote today on the mvp of the team it's got to be Jaden daniels no, the no. way you know the quarterback's the most important position on the field Perfect. and what he has been able to do as a rusher as a passer as a leader um you, you guys just simply aren't where you are today if he's not the quarterback right most definitely most definitely yeah yes, sir. what and and just he, uh, Jaden Daniels, like Noah Kane, and so many of these, these transfers came in, and Coach Kelly at his press conference Monday made a good point. He said the transfer portal can either build your team or it can destroy it, right? right. And especially if, if yeah. you guys came in uh, along with a bunch of guys that had been there for three or four years and weren't likable and guys are starting in front of guys who had been there before, this thing could have not worked. But obviously, mm -hmm. the team chemistry on this team has been good uh, from, from the start. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like, um, when I got here in the summertime, like, a lot of the guys were already here in the spring, so they already had some time to build their chemistry. But when I got here in May, you know, I could just tell, like, you know, nobody really cared about what is our, what is our record going to be at this point, who we going to be there, who we going to be there. We really just having fun day by day learning each other, just, you know, building the right habits for us to be successful on the field. And I think all those things that, you know, Coach Kelly has in place, you know, just the 
um, the details in our program, just being accountable every day. I think it helps guys just be able to take a step back and realize, like, as long as you're handling your day-in, day-out preparation, uh, Saturday's going to be easy. And uh, he's real big on just having self-confidence. So I think a lot of guys on our team have had just um, – the right mindset going into each game, like I'm gonna just do my job and do it the best of my ability and make plays on my numbers call. So yeah. um, I think our team, man, confidence is at all time high right now. You hear that in different sports, right? The practices are hard, the games are easy, right? Right, right. That's the way it's that's supposed how, to be. That's how it should be. That's yeah. how it should be, yes sir. And let's talk about your room too. Um, you know, going into the year, Coach Kelly had, had said all the way back in the spring it's gonna be a running back by committee. Mm. You know, it's not gonna be a Leonard Fournette situation where we're gonna you know turn around and hand some guy the ball 20, 25 times. And yeah. you know, uh, once again, that may not work if the guys aren't on board. Mm. Hey, come on, coach, I need ten carries before I'm warm. That right, type of thing. Right, real talk. You real know, talk. and so uh, but you guys have made this work, and let's let's start with Josh Williams. You know, here's a guy that kind of does everything right, huh? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, Josh is a guy that I had, I had a chance to get close with during the summer, and I could just tell, like, um, just how he comes to work every day, man. He's just eager to learn. He always asks a lot of questions in the meeting room. You know, he makes all of us better because, uh, you know, he's just always real attentive. You know, he's always willing to help guys uh, understand certain concepts, understand a certain place. So he's just been a great teammate. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes, sir. A lot of people, I ask you about John Emery after this past game. Obviously, John didn't have the game he wanted. You know, the two fumbles lost in the game, and certainly he's trying to hang on to that ball. Um, but you, I think a lot of people were impressed by what you said about him and supporting him as a teammate. And I think you mentioned you said you'd fumbled against Penn State last year. And yeah, you, yeah and, uh, uh, excuse me, Ohio State. You yeah, played first, my first carry of the game, first, like, really first offensive drive, uh, first play I fumbled against Ohio State last year. So. I, I always told John, man, I was like, man, I've been there. I get it. When it's, just, it's a lonely feeling. Um, but all you can do, man, is just create that positive mindset for you and get ready for the next play because it's easy to get down on yourself once you make a mistake, especially fumbling the ball. Um, but I, like I said, you know, we're all human. make mistakes. You just got to gotta, you gotta learn from it, you know, and just try your best not to let that happen again. There are certain things that he brings to the game that are hard to replicate, like the Auburn game where the guy gets in the backfield and has him dead to rights for a five-yard loss, and he somehow broke out of it and scored a touchdown. And then the Alabama game out of the backfield where he catches the pass and cuts back and, and scores, he does bring those electric plays to this offense. Yeah, so, yeah, and uh, John is a guy that, uh, like I said, I've been on him since high school. We were always competing at the same high school camps, and so we pretty much had a history together. But he's always been a great athlete, always been able to make guys miss in space and just make big plays. So... It's just, I told him, man, like, I'm like, bro, I get it. It's, it's, it's a frustrating, lonely feeling, but, man, this team going to need you down the stretch. So this is all about responding the right way, man, just being ready when your number's called. We'll see uh, how much Josh can go this week against Texas A&M, and we see how, we'll see how much John Emery gets played. But it appears that you're going to, once again, play a large role in uh, carrying the football and getting LSU yards on the ground and hopefully getting into the end zone. How does that make you feel at, at this point of the year? No, I'm excited. You know, I'm excited. I'm just, you know, appreciative about being back at LSU, man. Just, uh, just happy to be a part of this great team, be a part of this great stretch we've had. And, uh, you know, I'm just keep applying the same principles I've been applying all year. You know, just going to be ready to execute at a high level. You know, and just be ready to help contribute in a big way on Saturday. All the playoff talk at this point, uh, you throw it out the window if you lose at Texas A&M, right? So, you know, uh, everyone's caught up and they need to win these next two. And if we beat Georgia, but... Really, it's all in front of you right now. And Coach Kelly has made the point, hey, look, Texas A&M is going to play their best game of the year. Mm-hmm. They've got a lot of talent. Um, and so talk to me about, uh, you know, the challenge of going to College Station this weekend. Yeah, well, I, it all starts with today at practice. I mean, we've got to have a great, great, great Wednesday and then a great Thursday. And then we need to have great walkthroughs on Friday. It's, it's all about the, the buildup. It's not even about the game, honestly, because when the game comes, you're going to let everything that you do naturally happen. But yeah. it's about the buildup, the preparation. It's about the day in, day out of you doing the, the small things that help you get to this point. So I just think, man, as long as we have these, these next three days of a real good preparation, it's going to help Saturday be easier. a and they have real athletic defense, real talented. Um, the coach has been preaching to us. If they could put it all together, they could beat anybody. And you know, like I said, they, they lost about four on Bama on the road. So they had the pieces. They had the talent. It's just like they, they came on short a lot of games. Uh, we're going to have to be ready to play. You know, it's going to be a hostile environment. Um, they're going to be loud. So, I mean, it's just, as long as we had these next three days, um, a great preparation for us, it's, it's going to be good for us on Saturday. And when you're warming up, watch out for that cannon. 
So what happened yeah, was UMass players. Yeah, yeah, most <laughs> definitely. Yeah, that thing is loud. It's real loud. <laughs> the the, 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 uh, loud. the goal is to keep the cannon quiet because yeah. I think they fire it when they score a touchdown, they fire it when they kick an extra point, and then they fire it when they kick off. So you can hear that thing three times in a, in a few minutes. No, so. yeah, it's definitely loud. Looking forward to the uh, atmosphere. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. Yes, and, sir. And in 2018, where were you? Still in high school? I was, a, I was a senior in high school. I was still at IMG. You uh, remember that seven overtime game? Yeah, yeah, I remember watching that game. <laughs> I remember watching that game. That was, whew. Yes, that, sir. That's one of those games you never forget. Nah, not at all. I remember watching that game. Uh, that was exciting. Seven overtime contest. LSU felt like they won the game like seven times, but yeah. uh, we won't go back to that. But just this team, uh, you lose to Florida State, and to start the year, LSU's unranked, Florida State's unranked. It's like, well, these two teams, maybe neither of them are that good. And now you're in a position where you can win 10 out of 11 games. You're in the SEC championship. Just the, uh, I don't know if I want to call it a turnaround, because your teammates have told me that after the Florida State loss, Coach Kelly brought you guys in. Don't panic. Don't, um, you know, don't be worried. Let's attack the process. And, and here you are. Yeah. Now after that Florida State game, it definitely was a, uh, it was it was it was a frustrating feeling because you know we felt like we had a great great camp and uh, like our conference was all time high and it never wavered. But after that Florida State game, it just it just brought us closer. You know we we were anxious to get that first win after that Florida State game, which we felt like we should have won the first game, but it didn't happen, so we had to move on. So I think that just helped us have a great performance against Southern and then just built off of Mississippi State in New Mexico. Um, but like this team just. For, for a lot of guys that came from a lot of different places and from guys that who really weren't that familiar with each other, like, you know, to say where we're at right now as far as the team chemistry and just the team bond-wise, it's, it's great to see because, like, it's easy it's easy to have guys from different schools be like, I want to get mine, I don't want to get mine. Uh, we're winning, but I'm not getting mine. But like, that's not the case with this team. Like, uh, guys are very selfless and just ready to contribute any way that they can, and that's just helped us have this much success up to this point. And the character you guys built – Going to Jordan Hare Stadium, going to the Swamp, those are two of the toughest places to play in college football, no matter what kind of team they put on the field. You know, the, the crowd noise, how loud it gets, and all that stuff. And you guys won in those two places. And I think Coach Kelly, I think he became the first LSU head coach ever to win at both of those places in the same year. Yes, sir. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. It's, 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 been a great, it's been a great season for us uh, up to this point. You know, Josh not finished yet, of course, but... Uh, it's just like I think one thing that the team is like actually like you know really bought into is just locking in on like the the, the build up, locking in on the day in day out grind of did you do you do your questionnaire? Are you locked in on your details? Are you locked in on going to class? Are you locked in on handling this part of your process? So I think like guys are just so anxious, man. That, you know the ball out on Saturdays, but we understand first though we got to handle the, handle the important things during the week. And that that just helps us you know be ready on Saturdays and be disciplined. As much as we can. Let's talk about the Alabama game because uh, there are some LSU fans, Noah, that if they said, "Well, you can only win one game and go one and 11 they would say, "Well, if, if, if we can beat Alabama, I'll, I'll be happy." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. And so uh, the importance of that victory uh, this year, and what was it like to play in a game like that when Tiger Stadium's on eleven, and um, you know you, you won't forget that I'm sure for the rest of your life. Nah, uh, it was awesome. It, like man, when Mason caught that touchdown, right, that two point conversion. Um, it was like it really felt like a movie. It felt like a movie for real. Like I know you see in movies when the whole team is on the field, the music in the background, everything feel right and perfect. That's really how it felt for us, honestly, for real. Just with the students storming the field, it's just, it's just something you came to, uh, like you know describe. You got you had to be there for it. It was just it was everything happening so fast. But like uh, you know that 24 hour rule to enjoy it. You know had to move on to the next week for Arkansas. And so you know, that, that 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 night though was it was definitely magical, especially. It was like a movie. Yeah, it was like a movie. We're yeah. going for two. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And if you were sitting in the movie theater, the, nah, the ball would be tough. slow motion real to Mason tough. Taylor. Does he catch it? Does yeah. he not? Yeah. Does he get inside the pylon or definitely, not? Definitely a slow motion in the movie. It definitely would have been slow motion. <laughs> nah, that's funny, though. Yeah, it, it was great. It was great. It was great. What, how did you feel in that moment when mm. you, you're hearing, okay, we're going for two, we're going for the win? I'm not. I'm not about to say this and say like I wasn't just like oh oh this is crazy. But like um, we prepared for that though. We always practice two point conversion in practice, so I already knew we were gonna have a great play call. You know, be able to execute at a high level. But uh, it was definitely like you know you you were on your toes a little bit because it, it was it was all or nothing at that point. But uh, and then they called timeout. Yeah, they called timeout. And out. you still go for it. It was all or nothing at that point. But uh, you know the whole offense did a great job of executing that play. Mason made a great catch for us, and the rest is history. 
What about some of these young guys who were in high school just a year ago and are stepping onto some of the biggest stages in college football and performing? Mason, for one, mm-hmm. catching that ball. Your your left and right tackle, uh, Will Campbell, Emory Jones, yes, to sir. play on the offensive line going up against Alabama defensive lineman who might be 20, 21 years old. Yeah. And then Harold Perkins. You know, yeah. the future's bright, huh? Yeah, no, nah, it's very bright. Now, that, that freshman class is as talented as I've been around, honestly. Like, um, my freshman year at Penn State, we had a talented group. I feel like it's probably the best freshman class I've ever been around. But these guys in this freshman class here, they legit, all of them. Like, and they're very mature for their age as well. Like, I noticed that when I got here in the summer, like, those guys just work. They're not really worried about the noise. They're not worried about what people are saying about them, good or bad. They, they work. And they, they come ready every day. They have a great mindset. And they just... They help our team in a big way, help us win. So, like, they're a great addition to our team. Have you seen uh, anything like Harold Perkins before, a true freshman on defense that can wreck shop like yeah. he can? I was, uh, it's funny you said that. I was with Michael Parsons for a minute at Penn State, and uh, he, he was he was different. And, like, I, I, I've said it before, like, Harold kind of reminds me of Mike as far as just how they play, the tenacity, the, uh, the type of energy they bring to the defense. Like, those guys are just playmakers, and... Uh, the, the sky's the limit for Harold, man. The rest of those guys in that freshman class as well. But, like, it's just something you don't really see every day. It's a guy that can play sideline to sideline, be physical downhill, and just make plays that much and consistently. That's, that's, that's something special. I want to talk a little bit about your coaches uh, before we let you go. Frank Wilson, the running backs coach, he's a Louisiana legend. Uh, <clears throat> the running backs he's recruited over the years and coached. What is he like to uh, – to play for, and obviously ball security is a big thing with him. Yes, sir. Yeah, it is. Um, man, Coach Frank, man, he's 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 a great teacher of the game. He's he's um, he just helped me grow in a lot of ways this year, as far as just off the field, just understanding the game, understanding uh, just understanding O line play, just understanding why plays are being ran this way, understanding different concepts. He just helped the whole running back room, honestly, man, just understand football more and help us have a better IQ of the game. And he's just real big on us understanding the plays, understanding why we're running the plays. Just so when we're doing it, it just helps us play faster. And uh, he's just been a great teacher for all us running backs, man. It just helped us all come a long way as far as being a better student in the game. Yeah. Brian Kelly, the head coach, uh, I guess both of you guys were freezing up north. Uh, yeah. And then came south. Freezing, for real. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At Penn State and Notre Dame. <laughs> I was watching Notre Dame play last week, and you see that. I mean, they're playing in a, a in a blizzard. I know? had flashbacks. I, I played in there last year, so I, I I understand what they were feeling. You know, it's not a, it's not comfortable. How many blizzards have you played in? Uh, really, one bad one. One at Michigan State last year. It's probably the only one. It was real real bad out there that day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, we're in Louisiana now, which you could get spring, fall, and winter all in the same week. But yeah, facts. Yeah. Uh, I've always been such a softy man. I don't think I could do that. I don't think I could go and live in the winter. It just seems like emotionally and psychologically, it can be depressing when you don't see the sun and it's cold and you know those long stretches. You talk about being mentally tough. You really got to be mentally tough, man. You just can't think about it. You could be you could be 15 degrees out there. You got to just. Lock in on your job and, you know, do it to the best of your ability. But it's, it's definitely not the most comfortable feeling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I can imagine during spring football, too, yeah. having to wake up. Oh, you got to be kidding me, man. Five in the morning. Facts, and- facts. No, it's, it's, def- <laughs> it's definitely cold. It takes a minute to get warm. But, <laughs> now nah, it makes you appreciate this weather down here, though, because, you know, bl- luckily for us, we don't have to play in really uh, two cold games. I mean, I don't think it's been a cold at A&M, but Arkansas right. and UAB these past two weeks have been a little chilly. But, yeah. you know, it's – Big Ten play after week four is cold. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Paul Maneri, the LSU baseball coach for years, he told me the sun goes away in October and doesn't come back until April or something <laughs> like that when he was at Notre Dame all those years. Yeah. Uh, so, Brian Kelly, tell me about him. What What is the uh, – why did you decide that, okay, this is the head coach I want to play for and all the things he's been preaching and telling you guys, how did it begin to resonate? Yeah, you know, for me, um, when I got in the transfer portal, I just – when I had the opportunity to come back home, he, Coach Kelly, you know, Coach Frank as well, they have a proven track record, you know, just having great backs in that system. And everywhere Coach Kelly's been, he's had great online play. So, I mean, that, like, running back doesn't want to play behind a real good online. And I, knew, I already knew running the ball was going to be an emphasis, you know, in his offense. And, um, of course, LSU just being home, hometown school and um, just being so familiar with the school. Like I, like I said, I came down here a lot, you know, being out with camps and it's always been around the program. So, like, it just, it just made a lot of sense for me and my development. You know, I, I just knew, uh, you know, Coach Frank and, you know, the offense and the system that they had in place here was going to help me get to where I want to get to. And, uh, of course, that's the next level. But 
uh, I just think like you know th just the details, man. The accountability part is what I, what yeah. really drawn me to Coach Kelly, man. Just when I got when I came on my official visit in January, um, I definitely seen like the things they had they were having in place that was just gonna help this program be successful and get back to where LSU was supposed to be at. And uh, you know up to this point, man, it's been great. The things they've had in, in place for us, man, it's just all uh, helped everybody across the board to be a better version of themselves. And the graduate champions mantra that he's been hammering home. Uh, I was talking to uh, B.J. Ojolari and Josh Williams sitting right here, and uh, I said, well, the average fan hears that, and they roll their eyes. Come on, man. This is about winning football games, yeah. getting to the NFL, all that. Yeah. But I think he told us a while back, hey, look, if I can't trust you to go to class, then I can't trust you to, you know, you're going to jump off sides, or you're going to miss a block, or, or sure. those kind of things. He, they, they all seem to tie in together, don't I they? Do. I mean, have you seen your teammates – Say hey, I gotta go to class. I gotta do well in school. Uh, nah, it's very important because uh, all those things correlate. You know, you know, like Coach Frank always says, uh, how you do any, how you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah. And that's just a big that's just a big piece for us. Like it's it's easy to slack off in certain areas, but like I said, you slacking off in one area, that's eventually gonna translate to your on the field performance. And it's it's easy to be like, no, it's not. But it's always the small things that get to you and like. You know, one of my um, mentors, like, I always heard growing up, is like, it catch up to you when it catch up to you. Whether that be this week, next week, it's going to catch up to you in that critical moment. And you're going to wish you would have been disciplined in one area more than the other because it's all about just having that discipline. And that discipline always correlates to on the field. So, like, man, graduating champions is big because football, everybody knows it's a violent game. It, your circumstances can change at any play, any yeah. given play. Um, you could be done playing. And so you just got to be able to be appreciative of the opportunity and, you know, be ready to play. It feels like when I run out of gas in the car, right? You always run out of the worst time, you know? It's like I'm yeah. in a hurry or whatever, you know, the timing can be so prevalent there. I apologize. Uh, are you close to graduating or what were you? Uh, 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 I had graduated in May. I graduated in at, May at, at Penn, Penn State. State. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. you have two years left, right? Yes, sir. Two okay. years left. Yes, sir. So do you, have, do you have a decision to make at the end of the year or, or, or what do you think? Yes, sir. I definitely have a decision to make. Um... You know, going to talk with the Coach Kelly and Coach Frank and, of course, my family and just see what the best decisions possible for my future. Gotcha. Yes, All right. So let's end on a lighthearted note. This is some. This is a question I sometimes ask uh, LSU team, uh, LSU players in different sports. And So what LSU Tiger asks the stupidest questions in team meetings or, you know, if you can have some fun, like, are you serious, man? Did you just ask that or not pay attention or, you know, do you all have a guy like that? I don't mean to ask you to put somebody on blast, but this is kind of lighthearted stuff. Maybe you can name two or three. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. We just, we just all are ask good questions. Nobody specifically. I have a guy in mind, but I don't want to throw him under the bus. Uh, can you just but, give me what he would say? Or Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I can't really give you what he'd say because he's, he's, he's... It'll he, be obvious. Yeah, it is. I mean, he's, he's, he's asked some pretty, like, you know, generic questions that everybody knows the answer to, but... Uh, yeah. I got one guy in my... <laughs> I'm not going to do that to him. One, of, right. my, one uh, of my linemen, man. I ain't going to do it to him. After you yeah. win the SEC championship. How about that? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. exactly. Maybe we can, we can talk about it then. The, so. joke, the jokes will definitely be said then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, congratulations on all your success. Uh, like you said, you've been gone since 06, really, yes, huh? sir, nah, from this area. From Honestly, though, but I, uh, this has always been home. I've always been, my dad's always stayed down here, so I've always been back in Baton Rouge every summer, almost every other weekend, honestly, growing up until, like, high school. So it's always been home, honestly, just... Baton Rouge, Dallas, Dallas, Baton Rouge. So it's always been my, it always felt like home to me, honestly. Awesome. Yes, sir. Noah Kane, thank you for your time. Appreciate you, man. Thank oh, you. Look forward to the rest of the season. Yes, sir.